Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. I just bought this Khan Model 24J recording bass. Look at her. She's a real beauty. I had to put the camera up really high just to get this thing in the view of the camera. So I'll try not to knock the camera over. This thing has a huge 24 inch bell and the bore of this thing is very large. Also, you can almost drive a truck through it. I measured it out at 773 thousandths of an inch. Most models similar to this have the three valves. This one has four, so that makes it a little more unusual. This thing is very heavy also. It takes quite a bit of strength to lift this thing up. Because the bore is so large on this, it can make a lot of noise, but it takes a lot of air to fill it up. And also you see that the bell points forward, and that's so that the sound can go out forward because the tubas sit in the back of the band, and this uh, puts the sound up and over the band and out into the audience. This is a tuba, but it's also known as a recording bass. And the reason they call it a recording bass is it was used in recording music. And now that the microphones are better, they don't need to make a tuba like this to get the same sound from the, on the microphone. So in some way these things are obsolete, but people still do like to play these things. They're really fun to play. I'm not a tuba player, but I know a lot of tuba players, and they love playing tubas like this. From a repair technician's point of view, I think the most interesting thing about this tuba are the valves. Not only is this tuba a work of art, it's also an engineering marvel. The way that they made these valves is amazing. The engineers who designed this had a dilemma. They had this huge bore on this thing, and when you have a huge bore and you push down the valve, you have to go the entire bore of the instrument plus a little bit extra. So you would have to push this valve down more than an inch. And that's quite hard to play fast when you have to push down a valve that far. So some person who had to be really smart came up with a brilliant idea. Here's the large round part of the tubing. And what they did when they went through the valve section, they flattened it out and made it smaller, but they also made it longer. So the tubing has the same volume, but it's oval and it's squished down so that the valve does not need to travel as far to get it to line up. That's why they call this style of valve the short action valve. I will pull out one of these valves and show you what that looks like. These are the round parts, and these are the oval parts, and you can see that they're a lot smaller this dimension, but they're a lot wider this dimension. You may wonder why some of the ports are round and some are oval. That's because the only part that needs to be oval is the part going through the valve section. On the upstroke, since the air is not going through the valve tubing, it does not matter if these line up. It only matters on the downstroke. So when you go up and down, it only matters that it lines up where the tubing goes through the valve section. So on the valve where it goes up and down, you can see that it only needs to go up a little bit rather than a lot if you had this size of tubing. But the engineering marvel does not end there. I'm going to put this valve back in here and then change the angle of the camera to show you something else. Now you're looking down on top of the valves, you can see that these do not line up in the center of the valve. And the reason for that is if they were in the center, they would be so far apart, it would be really hard to spread your fingers apart that far to play it. So what they did is they moved the third valve and the first valve closer to the middle so that you can play it more comfortably. Now the fourth valve, they put that a little bit off to the side too and down a little farther so that your pinky can play that uh, at least somewhat comfortably. But that brings up a problem. If the valve stem is not in the center of the valve, when you try to take the valve out, then it would not work too well because the hole in the valve cap would go around and around when you tried to unscrew the valve cap. And obviously, you cannot spin the valve around when you try to get the valve cap out because that would mess things up inside of there. So what they did is they made a little collar that goes around in a circle. You can see the collar moving, and this part of the valve cap is not moving. And I will show you how they did that. Here's the rather large valve cap, and here's the valve guide. And the valve guide on this one is a pin, and what it does is it keeps the valve from turning while you're playing it and keeps it lined up. I'm going to take this finger button off so that I can get the valve cap off and show you how that works. And there are actually four pieces to this one valve cap. A lot of times these pieces are stuck, so I use my soft jaw pliers and that can get the piece off without doing any damage at all. I put it on there and turn that. Okay, now it's loose. Now 
This part can come off. It screws off. And there's the piece. It also has little notches underneath, so you can get at it from this side and unscrew it that way too, if you have the right size screwdriver for that. So if you pull that off, then there is a little lid thing that goes on top of there. I'm not sure what it's called, but it, there's that. And then there's the ring. And the ring is the only thing that turns when you are screwing the valve in and out. That's what keeps the finger button lined up when you screw in the valve and when you take out the valve. So this part comes off too, and that's just a ring that threads onto the threads on the casing. And this is the other part. This is the valve guide that keeps the valve in line. And there's a notch that goes into the casing. In the casing, there's a notch that holds the valve guide in place. And then there's a rod on the valve guide. And that goes into the hole on the valve that keeps the valve in place and keeps the valve from rotating. Each one of these four pieces has a number on it. There's a two, a two, and a two. And then on this one, there is also a two somewhere. There it is. And that keeps all the parts together on the valve cap. Sometimes you need to take these apart to clean them up because they can get junk on this and it can cause the ring to not move well. So every now and then you do need to take these apart. I will show you how to put it back together. Put the ring on the valve guide section. Then put the little lid, whatever you call that, on top. Then this piece screws in and holds everything together. Then the valve cap goes on the valve and the finger button on top of that. They call this style of finger button the Christmas tree finger button because it looks like at least the bottom two layers of a Christmas tree. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this work of art. It's a beautiful instrument. Since I do not play tuba, you tuba players out there, please leave comments below and also make sure you look at the comments below and see what other people have to say about this tuba. Also look in the description below for a link to the playlist, Unusual and Interesting Instruments.